The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Charlotte Salwai Tabimasmas, Prime Minister of the Republic of Vanuatu. May I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming the Prime Minister of the Republic of Vanuatu and invite him to address the General Assembly. Mr. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I should like to thank uh, His Excellency Tijani Mohamed Band of Nigeria for upon and congratulate uh, him upon his appointment to the presidency of the 74th session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. Mr. President, I wish to assure you of uh, the support of Vanuatu over the course of your mandate, and I have full faith in the fact that your presidency shall be successful and efficient. I also wish to extend our deepest gratitude to the outgoing president, Madam Maria Fernanda Espinosa, for her leadership and the excellent way with which she spearheaded the proceedings of the 73rd session of the General Assembly. Sir, I wish to extend the solidarity of our people to the people and government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas in the wake of the destruction wrought by Hurricane Dorian. Uh, the, uh, this region of the Pacific had lost one of its uh, leaders, the Prime Minister of Tonga, and I wish uh, to take this opportunity to convey to the people and government of, uh, of Tonga our deepest and most sincere uh, condolences. I also wish to extend our deepest condolences to the people and government of the French Republic uh, following the death of Mr. Jacques Chirac, a friend of uh, Vanuatu and an individual known for for his fight against global warming. The theme of the 74th session is galvanizing multilateral efforts for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, and inclusion. This is relevant in the light of the challenges faced by the international community, and it fully dovetails with our with sustainable development agenda. Mr. President, we have gathered at a time when the world is encountering multifaceted, complicated challenges. Uh, conflicts are compounded by humanitarian crises. These are proliferating. The threat of arms race has risen. Terrorism remains a threat. Uh, human rights violations are rife. The environment is evolving rapidly due to the consequences of climate change. The technological revolution has reshaped the future of labor and the global economy is facing growing uncertainty. These are complicated challenges. They have arisen at a time when the multilateral environment is subjected to major pressure due to heightened populism and xenophobia. This requires unilateralism all the more. These developments reflect the erosion of trust vis-a-vis -vis multilateral institutions such as the United Nations and their capacity to deliver upon sustainable solutions for peace, security, and development. We all know that the world is becoming all the more interconnected and that global challenges cannot be resolved by a single country, single-handedly. Multilateral institutions with the United Nations at their heart is, are all the more of vital importance to resolve crises. Ongoing unilateralism uh, leads to insecurity. We have borne witness to this uh, with Europe in the 20th century during the two world wars. Some fear the consequences of uh, uh, climate change. Many people are dying due to starvation, the atrocity of wars, natural disasters, and non-communicable diseases. To ch ta tackle these challenges and to build trust in the multilateral order, it is key that multilateral institutions such as the United Nations continue to reform themselves to become more inclusive. In 39 years of existence, uh, Vanuatu has been an open, small island economy, and in recent years we have achieved sustained economic growth. This has been buttressed by robust macroeconomic stability and responsible, accountable and effective, efficient governance. Our growth projections are promising. Although we are satisfied by this progress, we still have a great deal of headway to achieve to 
attain the goals that have been set out. This is difficult due to the fact that we are extremely vulnerable to natural disaster, vulnerable to the external shocks to the global economy. The United Nations have classified Vanuatu as among the most vulnerable countries in the world. And due to this reality, the importance of achieving and uh, the SDGs is all the more significant. With the recent report of the uh, uh, the Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change, which stressing that the world is moving towards three degrees Celsius, small and developing states, including ours, continue to face challenges, uh, natural disasters, rising sea levels, drought, oceans acidification. The climate challenge remains uh, the greatest threat to uh, small land states such as ours in achieving those goals. Those challenges have been set out by the Secretary General during his recent visit to uh, Pacific Islands, including Vanuatu. I wish to thank the Secretary General for this visit. I hope that our concerns will be reflected in the agenda adopted by the United Nations and that commensurate measures shall be adopted to address these challenges. Our extreme vulnerability means that our dependence upon the multilateral system system will be all the more important. Uh, we are not a major contributor to rising greenhouse gas emissions, and we urge the international community to rekindle efforts to reduce the rising global temperatures so that by 2030 electricity will be fully generated by renewable sustainable energy. And this is Align, in line with our nationally determined contribution. The health of oceans is threatened by irresponsible human activity and climate change. This is all the more alarming for our country. Part of our economy is dependent on marine resources. In 2017, we adopted an oceans policy, and we have set up uh, an arrangement to, uh, to regulate uh, the marine space to address the need to, to protect and sustainably use our marine resources. We have also prohibited single Single-use plastics, and we intend to scale up efforts in this area. We shall present a report during the second United Nations Conference on Oceans to be held in 2020 in Portugal. Moreover, there are mar maritime conventions that uh, Vanuatu will ratify before this year's close. In the light of the tremendous challenges of, of sustainable development faced by small and developing states, I wish to highlight five key areas. Areas. And in our view, these require a, a robust partnership between the United Nations and other multilateral bodies. First, to ensure that vulnerable countries such as Vanuatu continue to have access to sub, uh, subsidized financing. Second, stepping up financing for climate change and to provide for rapid replenishment of instru uh, financial instruments such as the Green Climate Fund. And ease access to these funds. Third, establish innovative tools to finance uh, the solutions to natural disaster risks. Fourth, find solutions to better manage uh, risk reduction measures adopted by Inter major international banks, which prevent the establishment of uh, uh, corresponding banking relations with our national banks. These measures are obstructing our engagement with the world and slowing down efforts to achieve SDGs. And fifth, proposing innovative solutions to challenges uh, uh, faced by uh, small and developing states in on the market, and these prevent other principal actors from participating in our economies and contributing to implementation of sustainable de de of the uh, development agenda. In August, we uh, adopted the Kainaki 2 declaration on the need to act quickly to counter climate change. We support robust regional engagements of the Blue Pacific, and we have launched 10 global calls for urgent measures against climate change change. We would call for their support from po development partners to achieve these goals in partnership with multilateral bodies. The role of the multilateral system in, in addressing these challenges through the United Nations, above all, is key. 
Hence, it is vital that the Secretary General be unstintingly supported in his efforts, the aim of which is to reform the organization, that the role be strengthened, and that the means be made available to help to address the challenges in an adequate way. In the same way, you support the establishment of a United Nations office in the North Pacific to help to strengthen uh, the presence there and to extend services to small and developing countries. Our country has 60% uh, of our country are young people under the age of 15. With these young people, we have an opportunity to harness their ingenuity and the potential to meaningfully contribute to our country's development. The current priority of my government is to ensure that our young workforce uh, can be well equipped and fully incorporated in a productive way in the labor market. We are implementing this plan by investing heavily in technical uh, intelligence and higher education. We have a government policy of access to education with government subsidies covering preschool, primary, and secondary education. And this has promised to achieve SDGs and to better prepare ourselves to address future economic challenges. In the light of the fact that my country is an archipelago, it is both costly and difficult to offer affordable health services to our people. We are facing an uptick in non-communicable diseases. These weigh heavily upon our scant financial resources, thereby redirecting resources that should have been invested in uh, primary health care. We have an important task to train our uh, health care personnel and to uh, improve medical infrastructure to address the growing need for health care. With a promise econ even with a promising economy, it is important that we ensure that there be a sustained inclusive growth. Inclusivity is a priority for our government so that women in individuals with disabilities fully contribute and participate in economic, political development and in society. Many countries of the world have cast off the shackles of colonialism. However, in my region, New Caledonia, French Polynesia, and Western Papua continue to fight for self-determination. We call upon the administering powers to respect the processes set out by the United Nations to ensure that people can uh, have their vo views heard regarding self-determination of their country. Uh, this includes the recent referendum in New Caledonia. The same process should be followed for French Polynesia. Uh, there are violations of human rights. We condemn emphatically uh, violations of human rights of the indigenous people of pa Western Papua. We uh, welcome, uh, we call for use of the United Nations system to uh, find solutions to these human rights abuses. Uh, the resolution of the leaders of the Pacific Islands Forum calls upon the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights to visit the province of Western Papua to conduct an assessment uh, based on concrete proof regarding the human rights situation. We call for this resolution, and we call upon Indonesia as a neighboring and partnering country of the region to act in a fair, just way and to authorize this mission. I would invoke the Charter of the United Nations, reaffirm our faith in basic human rights, dignity, the valor of the human person, as well as equality of men and women and of nations great and small. There is an obligation incumbent upon all of us to work hand in hand to address the economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed upon Cuba. The lifting of this will inter enable the Cuban people to have access and to fully exercise their basic human rights. Sir, the world has undergone profound changes in recent years with multifaceted consequences. These include climate change. These challenges require us to work together to build innovative partnerships, meaningful partnerships to achieve the SDGs. We need to raise the level of our ambition to renew our commitment to concrete action, to win the fight against poverty, to win the fight against climate change, and to ensure inclusive economic growth in a manner that reflects aspirations of our people to enjoy well-being. Uh, concerns regarding development of small island uh, developing states, uh, regarding climate change, regarding oceans, regarding poverty, are real. And the only way to find solutions is 
at the global level. These challenges are making us extremely vulnerable. As small countries, we have neither armies nor nuclear weapons. The international community may mock us, may look down upon us, may look askance at us, and may consider uh, may not consider us as strategic partners. However, one thing is certain. Our concerns for development are the concerns of humanity. So uh, uh, distorting these channel challenges would mean distorting hope for humanity. The international community uh, can only stand in solidarity if there is concerted action for the be well-being of those most vulnerable, those who are destitute. The Charter of the United Nations is our compass, a compass which, among other uh, things, is a reminder of the fact that we need to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war to reiterate our fundamental faith in human rights, to achieve social progress, and to create better uh, living conditions in a freer world. Let us work together to uh, deliver upon the hope embodied in the Charter of the United Nations. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of the Republic of Vanuatu for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.